Hi, my name is Jessica and welcome to my channel. The lighting is changing because the storm was supposed to roll in, so whatever. Um, as you can tell by the title of this video, I am doing another endometriosis type of video. So I'm just looking at the notes here on my phone so that I don't forget. But basically, if you're somebody who has endometriosis um, that's been confirmed for the most part, um, you'll probably have heard sometime in your life that pregnancy will cure your endometriosis or can cure it. The thing is, when I was pregnant, I still had pain. So my first trimester, I had a lot of pain. I ended up in the ER like at four weeks, pregnant four weeks in a couple of days. And I had a lot of pain in my pregnancy where the scar tissue is. Um, and yeah, when my baby would kick and move, I had pain basically my entire pregnancy. Um, I had some moments of not being in pain, but even if it was just like a small amount of pain, I had pain all the time in my pregnancy because of where my baby chose to hang out. And he chose to hang out in the areas that I had my endometriosis because it's not all gone, right? Because it keeps growing back. Yeah, so in that way, it didn't cure it for me. Next week, I will be six months postpartum and I have had one period so far. I'm about to have my second period and they are different. So I know that the first one can either be hell or it could be like, okay. And then the next one's hell. So I'm kind of just like, it's like the calm before the storm. I'm waiting to see if my next one is going to be really bad. Um, excuse my flyaway hair is postpartum hair loss and that your texture changes, hair texture changes. <laughs> so, um, some things have changed. Um, and then basically through these things that have changed, you'll see if pregnancy cured my endo. <laughs> so the first thing that has changed, well, before I get into it, I want to say with endometriosis and anything that is reproduction type thing, I don't believe in TMI. So I don't think there's too much information you could share because a lot of things aren't talked about when it comes to endometriosis and it needs to be talked about because so many people experience it and it's really underdiagnosed and takes a long time. Like for me, if you don't know my story, I suffered for 16 years before I received my diagnosis. So the only way you can truly, truly get a diagnosis is through surgery, um, a lapar laparoscopic surgery. So I'll link my, um, if I remember my laparoscopy story, uh, some people can, I have a friend who got hers, I think diagnosed through ultrasound, but she has like crazy adhesions and they said she has stage four, but, um, she has not had surgery yet. Um, but so some people like her could potentially be diagnosed because of that. But generally the gold standard is through surgery. So I was diagnosed with stage two endometriosis in 2017. And if you're someone who's a little bit educated in endo, you know that someone can have a lot of lesions or have stage four and not be in a lot of pain. Someone can have stage one and be in a ton of daily pain. So it's really just person dependent. With that, there's silent endometriosis, right? And um, I was trying to conceive for three years uh, using timed intercourse, letrozole, IUIs, and eventually conceived our son through IVF. That's just the general gist of me and um, endo. Now getting into the uh, topics is that the first thing that has changed is that um, when my stool moves through my bowels, it's extremely painful. I never had that before. So I had it where it hurt as I was going to the washroom, but now it hurts before. So it's like... It's not the whole time it's moving through because I have like no idea how long it moves through. I'm guessing it always moves through your bowels, but it's like literally just before I go to the washroom. So like, you know, before you get that urge or as you're getting that urge that you have to go number two, it's so painful, like so painful when it's moving through, like excruciating. So, so, so much pain is like, oh my gosh, like, oh my goodness, like that kind of pain. And, and it hurts just before it comes out. For me, it hurts as I go because of my tearing that I had from surgery and I'm still healing at six mo months postpartum. So it hurts traveling through just before it's like, oh my gosh. And then like, as it's coming out, it's like, I feel like, Ooh, I don't know. It sounds so nasty. I know, but as it's coming out, it hurts so much. So that is something that's different. The before part. So I've had one period it was may 14th and we're sitting right now at june 3rd or 4th right now that period it was painful but not anywhere near what it was at the height of how 
severe it was just before I got pregnant. So far, it's not as heavy. The pain wasn't too bad. I just used like a TENS machine and, and then Tylenol and Advil. And the heaviness, I just used a pad because it was my first postpartum period. I'm not comfortable putting anything in there yet. It was still a period, but was not as heavy as what I was used to just before I got pregnant. And another thing is I haven't had any clots yet. So if you were someone who watched any of my other videos, I did talk about how my periods are very clotty. They get so big and massive that I literally have to push them out. So I haven't had any of that yet, nothing. So not a single, like maybe there was like the tiniest minuscule, but I'll say I have had nothing so far. And getting away from period, um, cause endo affects and PCOS really affect um, your ovulation too most of the time. Um, at least myself it, it did. And I know other women who have endo or other people who have endo. Um, my ovulation pain is different. So it's still painful, but like in a different way. I kind of don't remember what it was like before, but I know it's different. So I can feel like both ovaries are in a lot of pain, like really low. And it feels like hunch over kind of pain, you know? Um, it's, yeah, it's really, really uncomfortable. And I've had to use uh, like just Tylenol and Advil um, while I have that pain. The last point I'm going to talk about is that um, my ovulation symptoms are stronger. So I have terrible migraines and extreme, extreme thirst. Like I cannot drink enough and my head hurts and I swear it's all connected, obviously. And I'm breastfeeding and I drink a ton, but nothing I drink is like good enough. So ovulation is just a whole other ball ball game right now. I still have the lower back pain with that. Yeah, so I'm kind of interested to see how it's going to be going forward. I did see um, a new gynecologist recently. So we freaking made it. It was so stressful. I tried to film other stuff, but I couldn't. And we are waiting for the doctor now. And little man did so good. I'm so proud of him. And she prescribed me a progesterone only birth control so i'm really nervous to go on it just because i'm breastfeeding and i know that they say it's safe but really you can't say any drug is safe for uh pregnant or breastfeeding you just have to go off what's what the general population has used and has it affected their babies so i'm just not comfortable yet i kind of want to just have another period to see what it's like and make my decision from there um i would honestly rather suffer in pain than potentially give my son hormones through my breast milk that is a personal decision nothing is right or wrong for anybody it's just what's right or wrong for you personally right so to encompass all that together, did pregnancy cure my endo? If I were to just compare it off my first period postpartum, I would say, yes, it has. It's so different, it's awesome, it's so much more manageable, but my ovulation pain is so bad, and this ovulation was worse than my ovulation before I got my first period. So now I'm like, will the next one be bad? Who knows? So yeah, that's just a little uh, recap on my first period, with endo postpartum and if anything has changed and as you would have saw some things have changed um, i hope that you like this video and uh, if you are not subscribed already please consider subscribing um i said in my previous video about uh, why i don't compare myself to youtube mamas that i am just sharing about me my life so i before have said that this is like a lifestyle channel it's like i mean like lifestyles and like it's my life and it's styled how I live. I don't know. But yeah, I'm just sharing about my life and motherhood, having endometriosis. And yeah, that's basically it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so that I get suggested to other people. Because for me, at least, I was looking for videos on how was your period after having a baby when you had endo, you know, and I'll continue to update because if it changes, which it probably will, I will definitely update um, you guys on that. Uh, comment below. It did your first period postpartum with having endo, was it different? Was it better? Was it worse? Share it, share it below. I'm sure all of us, like the community of endo, they call it endo sisters. I don't know what the term is now is, is strong and we like to talk and we like to relate to each other. Right? So yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video. And um, I'm gonna have a little bit of changes to my channel here in terms of the amount of videos. I hope to start including a second video a week. I'm gonna try and just see how it goes. So thank you so much for watching again and have a great day. Bye.